In this video, I want to provide a bit of an intuitive explanation behind Bayes' rule. So just to recap, Bayes' rule is, for example here, if we're talking about two events, the event that it rains and the probability that it is forecast that it will rain, then we can write down that the probability that it rains, given that it is forecast, is equal to the probability that it is forecast to rain, and well, given that it actually does rain, times the probability that it will rain divided through by the probability of that it is forecast to rain. Okay, so how do we think about an intuitive explanation as to what's going on in this formula? Well, the first thing I actually do is I multiply through here by the denominator of the right-hand side. So that just gives me an expression which is that the probability that it rains given that it is forecast to rain times the probability that it is forecast to rain is equal to the numerator of our original expression. So the probability that it is forecast to rain given that it does rain times the probability that it actually does rain. Okay, so to actually provide some intuition as to what is actually going on in this formula, we're going to make use of a concept which is known as a Venn diagram. So a Venn diagram is a sort of pictorial representation of the probabilities of certain events occurring. So here what we can do is we can think about the event which is the event that it is forecast to rain. And we represent the probability of that event occurring, of that event occurring rather as the area which is contained within our sort of purple line here. And I should say that this entire rectangle represents the entirety of probability. So in this circumstance, the rectangle's area must add up to one. So the probability that it is forecast to rain is obviously less than one and it's greater than zero. So it satisfies the conditions for a probability. So just to be absolutely clear, in a Venn diagram, it is the area of certain events, so the area of the circle in this example, that is representing a probability. We can also think about the event, which is that it does actually rain. And we can think about this as being represented by the area which is contained within, let's say, this red sort of shape which I'm drawing here. Okay, now that we've drawn our Venn diagram, we can think about what is the intuition behind this sort of formula which I've worked out here, which is a sort of a rearrangement of Bayes' rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this left-hand side here. So the left-hand side here is made up of two terms. There is first the term which is the sort of probability that it is forecast to rain. Yeah, so the event here is that it actually is forecast to rain. And then the second event which occurs is that it rains given that it was forecast to rain. And we can think about the reason I've sort of given these things in order is because we start off by thinking about, well, what's the probability that it is actually forecast to rain? And in this example here, we can sort of think about that as now we are constraining ourselves to lie within the purple circle here. We're sort of now, we're saying that it does actually, uh, what well, is actually forecast to rain. Then the second thing we do is we say, well, what proportion of that area corresponds to the probability that it actually does rain? Because that's what a conditional probability is, remember, because what we do in a conditional probability is we now know that it does actually, or is actually forecast to rain, so this new area here should actually now add up to one. So this conditional probability here is, perhaps in this example, representing the ratio of the circle, or the purple circle, which is outside of the red circle, to that which is within. So when I multiply these two probabilities together, the probability that it's forecast to rain times the probability that it rains given that it's forecast to rain, that's telling me the proportion of area which is occupied by this sort of overlap area here. So what we're actually doing is we are working out this sort of overlap area, and a better word for this particular overlap area here is the probability that it is forecast to rain and it does actually rain. So we've reasoned through that the left-hand side must be equal to the intersection of it being forecast to rain and it actually raining. Okay, so that's the left-hand side. How can we go about thinking about the right-hand side? Well, 
without labouring it too much, it's exactly the same sort of method as we use for the left-hand side, except approach from a slightly different angle. So now we've got two events, the event that it rains and the event that it is forecast to rain, given that it actually does rain. So again, I'm going to think about these sequentially. So first of all, we're saying that it does actually rain. So then we know that we are constraining ourselves to actually sit within this sort of red circle here. And then we're saying, well, what's the proportion of that red circle here, which is occupied by it actually being forecast to rain? So fairly simply, that is going to also arrive us at the sort of intersection area here, which I'm now shading in, which is the probability that it is forecast to rain and it rains. So we can see that the left hand side equals the probability that it is forecast to rain and it rains, which is also equal to the right hand side. So that's the intuition behind Bayes' rule. Essentially, there are two different ways of arriving at this intersection area here. There is the sort of way where we start off with it being forecast to rain and then we work our way down to the area which just overlaps. And there is the second way where we start off with it raining and then we use the conditional probability that it is forecast to rain given that it does rain to again arrive in this overlap region here.